Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about the do's and don'ts of route work, how to get it, what to do, what not to do. It's super important if you're getting in route or if you are in route. So either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? How are you? Have a look around. If it's your first time here, you have hundreds, hundreds of hours, hundreds of episodes. It's been going on for like four or five years, so you got a ton of time. Catch up, binge away, watch everything, and all of them, or listen to them. It's found anywhere podcasts are, and even on YouTube. And if you're on YouTube right now, you notice that um, my face is all shaved and that was because it was my wife's birthday and she always gives me crap about my beard so i shaved it off it's coming back so don't even don't even worry about it um if you like the content if you think you get something out of it if you're just like dude this jersey guy is all right i want to give back well there's something awesome you can do and that's let me be your rep i am a rep for windowcleaner.com that's what i do for a living that's how I make my cheddar. That is uh, how I afford fancy uh, face shavings. <laughs> but if you want to rep, which I know you do, and uh, if you just want to help me in general, let me put your orders in. My number is 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone, so text me. Send me a message. Be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart, man. And let me put it through. I'll just verify your address. Be like, yo, one, two, three is a good address. I'll send it there. And that's it. If you're logged in, it'll save in your cart and I can see everything. By me putting it in, I get cheddar for it. It costs you nothing extra. It's like an awesome high five. It uh, makes all of this worth it and uh, lets me live another day. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, there's tons of you out there who uh, do that every single time they order, which is amazing. By the way, it doesn't matter if it's a big order. It can be small. It could be just every order is uh, is awesome. Uh, also, get American Window Cleaner Magazine. This is a magazine that I own. It started in 1986, and it's been going on since then. We changed it a ton uh, like a year or two, almost two years ago. So now it is a monthly magazine, actual paper magazine. This is what it looks like when it gets to you, right? It's all in a plastic label, but... Every month you get a magazine shipped to your door. Every month you get a sticker sheet, which if you didn't know, if you're not watching this on YouTube, I love stickers. The backdrop here is just all stickers. And uh, the nice thing is I always have extra sticker sheets. So I said that, put some more stuff up. Anyway, if you like stickers, you want to decorate things, you want to, again, help the industry, you want to learn more, you just want to get be awesome, get a subscription. Go to awcmag.com and get a subscription to the magazine. Whew. Anyway, there you go. There you go. That is uh, uh, the shameless plugs of the day. I appreciate you guys sticking through that. Um, i got to get that out of the way. I'm sorry. Every single week. Every single week. Um, if you want to avoid that part, by the way, it's like three minutes, that intro. So anyway. But today we are uh, talking all about the do's and don'ts of route. And uh, let me just start off by saying route work is what you do every week, every two weeks, or every once a month on storefronts, right? Some people call them storefronts. The big thing is that you could do a storefront every three months, and it's not route because you can't build it into a route. A route just means that every week I'm doing these, every other week I'm doing these, every third week I'm doing these, every fourth week I'm doing these, right? You build up a route. The nice thing with route is there's frequency. In a route, you can clean. Literally, if it rains, if it snows, if it's hot, if it's cold, route is frequency. It's awesome, especially if you're in an area that has some temperature fluctuations. I was in Wisconsin, and uh, route is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing, right? So get route. If you don't have route, it's awesome. By the way, when you're starting a route or starting to get into route, you're going to not make money. You have to build up that route. And the big thing about it is you have to build it up right. And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about the do's and don'ts of route work. And route work's not like houses. It's not like commercial. It's not like any of that other stuff. Everything has their own specific things. We've talked about it before. Commercial, you got to do bids. You can't just like walk in and be like, hey, how are you? 
But in route, you can walk in and just do that. That's the point of it. And the first do, and the do and don't of route, <laughs> the do's and don'ts of route, is sell often. I don't know how many people have ever told me, be like, oh, yeah, I went out for like probably a whole hour yesterday. I didn't get anything. No, 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 no. That's not how route works. There's a specific way to sell route, but you have to go out there and do it a lot. Plan an hour every day. Plan every Friday you have a half day. Take that half day and go do route for four hours. I'm telling you, you have to cover a ton of ground because in route, it's a numbers game. It's not like houses. It's not instant closes. You're going to get maybe anywhere from 12 to 18% close rate in the get-go. And that's on the high end. That's if you're really good and got this dialed in, right? But one in 10 maybe will say yes on site. So that means you have to sell 10 of them or talk to 10 of them to get one to close on site. You'll get another potentially 30, 40% over the phone and follow up. Follow up is so much more important. Follow up is the absolute king of, of 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 sales, right? But in order to do that, you have to go out there and get the contacts. So do it often. A big thing when you go out there and do it, we've talked about it, watch other shows on how to do it and what you do, but you're getting their name, you're getting their contact information, you're writing notes and you will follow up, which we'll talk about. But you have to sell often. The more no's you get, the closer you are to yeses. If I could go out, this is when we have full-time salespeople too. You can go out and sell four hours a day. You're doing door knocks, uh, route. But four hours a day, you're doing callbacks. It's that important. But you have to fill that pipeline. You have to fill that pipeline. Do it often. Another thing is if you're doing a route, say you do you know, this store here. Sell the place next door. Every time you do that route, go in there. Every time. I'm talking about sell often. Because the problem is, is you're uh, bidding against or fighting against Bucket Bob's. The guy who just stops and goes, hey, can I clean your windows for beer money? And they're like, no, thanks. They're like, okay. They never see from him again. You're differentiating yourself and showing them why you are, you're a real company, right? You're on a different level. Sell often. The first don't in the list is don't send mailers. There is no way at all in any market, by the way, your customers are not different. Your area is not different, right? You cannot sell by flyers. You cannot sell with postcards. You cannot sell with door hangers. You cannot sell with any of that stuff. Because here's the thing, follow-up is more important than going in the first place. If somebody gets a postcard, you can't follow up with that. If somebody gets a postcard, a door hanger, a EDDM, a fill in the blank, they're going to look at it and throw it away if they don't need your service. If they do need your service, maybe they'll call you. But you've just taken away most of all your closes. And you've taken even the closes you would get by going in down a notch because now there's gatekeepers. right? Who gets the mail? Whoever's working. right? It's spam. They throw it away with the 30 other things they get. Do not send mailers. They do not work. Save your money. You can save your money, spend that on fuel to get your butt in there, and you're going to do so much more. You're going to do so much better by doing it that way, I'm telling you. A big thing that people kind of forget about is that in in any commercial situation, uh, commercial route, anything that you're talking uh, B2B, right, business to business, there are gatekeepers that get a ton of stuff. Right, QuickBooks send them sends them things. Get a credit card with QuickBooks. Get this. Oh, you want the capital for your bill? Oh, what's it? They get so much junk mail. They get more junk mail than you do at your house. So they're just throwing it away. They're throwing away more stuff than they actually look at. Right? They're like, okay, where's well, the bills? I got to recognize the name of the company that's sending it to me and all that. Don't send mailers. They do not work. Right? Another do, which is a big one, a big one, is building credibility. Now, let me kind of go into credibility a bit. Credibility, the whole fake it till you make it thing, you can explain things in order to convey a message and nothing is exaggerated, right? 
if this is the first route job you've ever gotten, don't go in there and go, oh, I do this place, this place, and this place. Don't, don't even do that, right? You don't need to then, and the first ones is you're getting it in, building credibility, but you need one or two route jobs, and you can use this to build your credibility. You can use years on experience or service as credibility, right? You can use the fact that you have multiple vehicles if you're running multiple vehicles. Maybe you're just getting into route, but you've done houses for 10 years, right? You can build credibility by going, hey, you know, we're a window cleaner. We've been window cleaning for 10 years and we'd love to, you know, remember in route, you're always competing against the Bucket Bob. That's what I, my brain always tells me. You're competing against Bucket Bob. You're competing against Bucket Bob. You're competing against the guy who just like, oh, I'm going to go sell some stuff. Hey, you need your windows done. If they say yes, he's going to charge him five or 10 bucks. He makes a quick dollar and you never see him again. They're bombarded by that especially in like plazas and strip malls and things like that where they can hit a whole bunch of stuff. They're getting hit up for window cleaning a lot because when somebody's new into window cleaning, that's instantly what they think about. I'll go do these stores, right? So you're competing against, I don't want to say the lowest form of window cleaner because that sounds really jerkish, but you're, you're, you're anybody who ever wants to be a window cleaner can start on route they don't need credibility. They don't need quality. They don't need any of that stuff. All they need to do is find a store is like, yeah, I'll pay five bucks to get them looking better than they are, right? So we're trying to go above and beyond, right? So we're trying to let them know who we are and let them know that we're better than the other options. Remember, we're always competing against the other guy. The USP, why choose you? If there's 10 of them walking in, 10 window cleaners walk in, why would I choose you, right? So building credibility is so stinking important. When I walk into a, a business, because I do have a route, or had a route, I should say, I will always, always, always say, hey, my name is Jersey with XYZ Window Cleaning. Uh, we're just across the street. We do this place, this place, and this place. And uh, I'd love to uh, get you an estimate and hopefully uh, search you on some uh, window cleaning also. We're here every week. We're here every two weeks. We're here like the post office, uh, rain or shine, that is your week. Um, reliability is key. After that little spiel, I'm giving them the information during that. That's got everything written down. We've talked about how to do that, right? I'm doing my carbonless copy. I'm writing everything down. They have the information. They have the information about me. But that little blurb in the beginning just instantly took you from the guy who just came in off the street to a guy who owns a business or a company, right? If route, there's a big, big difference in that one-off guy and the guy who's like doing this as like his actual business. And that's why follow-ups are so important is because it shows them you're not the off the street bucket bob, one time, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am kind of thing, right? And building credibility, no matter how you do that, will differentiate you from somebody else. Now, you may have a bunch of uh, reviews. That's awesome. Right? You may have a bunch of people who love you and customers, but if you don't have route, how do you translate that to them? Right? Maybe you have a hundred five star reviews on Google. Right? Maybe that's your credibility. Maybe that's your USP. Hey, in all of my city, we are we have the most five star reviews of any company in our city, of any company in our state. Now, obviously that has to be true. Right? Maybe you're a review hound and you get them, which is awesome. Right? No matter how you go about that, no matter how you go about creating that USP, that's what then differentiates you from somebody else. That's what builds the credibility. It makes you a person, makes you a thing. Right? It makes you more than the next guy. You're competing against the bucket bottom. Remember that. Remember that. When building credibility in the same sentence, I'm going to tell you something that contradicts almost the exact same thing I just said. But it's don't worry about the other window cleaners. Now, you always want to make yourself better than them, being the better choice, but you don't want to focus on them. You don't want the other window cleaners to be in the back of your brain as in like, ah, 
every place they go into, they got a window cleaner. Yeah. Yeah. Every company that gets windows done has a window cleaner. 99.9% of the windows that you're going to come into and route have a window cleaner. You can't look for the ones that don't have window cleaners. You, you can't. That's, that's not impossible, right? If I'm a business, I have clean windows. If I don't have clean windows, that means I'm going out of business, right? If I do have clean windows and I hire my own employee to do it, they're doing a crap job. They're taking time away from customers to do that. And you have something to fill, but everything else is going to have a window cleaner. They either do it themselves or they pay somebody to do it. That's having a window cleaner. 0.1% maybe doesn't have a window cleaner. Maybe they're new in business. Those are nice to catch because they'll, catch, they'll, they'll hire you right away. But don't worry. I've had so many people. So um, as some of you know, I drop a few hints here because it's not really a public, public thing, but I do some private coaching. And um, I have uh, some clients uh, over the years. I've done this for years and years. Um, very limited, but I've done it for a long, long time. And I've had people who say, well, I don't do route because everybody's got somebody. I don't want to take work from another window cleaner. And I get that. And in the coaching, one of the accountability things and a lot of the practice we work on is getting over that. Because the big thing with route is that you're not stealing from another window cleaner. It's inevitable. People will take them from you. That's how it goes. But if there is a lack on their end, something they're not doing, you're going to take that job because of that. You're not personally attacking them. I've had people literally follow me. I could see them in their vehicle. And as soon as they left, they would come in and show them all the errors that we had. And they would try to sell the job because they knew that they hired somebody. I've had that. I've watched him. I've talked to him. It was a uh, franchise. And uh, I said, hey, man, like, I know what you're doing. Like, this is kind of shady, right? He's like, ah, oh, this is what we got to do, man. This is what our bosses tell us to do. I'm like, it's crappy, dude. It's crappy, right? I don't say that. I don't say purposely cutthroat the person. But here's the thing. 99.9% .9 of companies, businesses, route. We'll have a window cleaner. You're going to take some of that from people. Not on purpose, but that's what you're going to do, right? So there's so many things that go into that, right? The mindset that uh, like another window cleaner has is I don't, that's the mindset and it's going to kill you. You cannot have that mindset. You cannot worry about other window cleaners because they all have other window cleaners. But if they're lacking, then it's up to you to find where that is. On a side note with that one, listen to what the route person says. Listen to what they say. I'm telling you, in life, here's a life lesson. If you guys are listening right now and you're like, this guy is a complete full of crap. I'm just some dude in a, with a microphone and a bunch of stickers in the back. That's all I am. So take it with a grain of salt, right? But if you ever take something away from anything, that I've ever said, right? It's, it's not to worry about other window cleaners, but to worry about yourself, right? If you create a better experience, you will have more customers. If you create a better experience, you'll have more customers. Always. There's always going to be maybe a couple people who only earn a dollar and they just don't care, right? But you can't worry about other window cleaners. You just can't. You're always worried about yourself and your company, right? And you're not purposely going to crap on other window cleaners, right? You're just not. So it's, it's not that at all, right? So don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. Uh, the um, number one don't, if you will, is don't ask. The big thing I see people when they're doing route is because they're nervous. Confidence translates. 
if you're confident about something, if you're super confident about something, it translates to the next person. If you go in for a handshake right away, hey, how are you? Good to see you. They instantly see confidence, and that instantly changes the tone. If you walk into a job and go, hey, um, uh, my, my name's Jersey, and I just wanted to know if I could give you a window cleaning bid. They're going to say, no, thank you, though. We have somebody. Of course, of course. 100% of people will tell you that. I don't ever walk into a job and ask no questions. That wasn't bad grammar, but I don't ask questions that I can get a no from, right? If I walk in and I say, hey, my name is Jersey. Can I give you a window cleaning bid? Possibly they could say no. If I walk in and I say, um, um, here's your bid. It's uh, $10 for all your windows. Uh, would you like to start that? They could say no. If I say, hey, here's $10. Is that cheaper than your other guy? They could say no. I can create 10 no's, and that's 10 opportunities to get shot down. What you do is create a singular opportunity, a singular question that could be the end of all questions. I want to walk in with all the information, give them my credibility, give them my bidding, give them my information, show them who I am, and I wait. Because what I was just about to say and got sidetracked with my ADD brain is if you only take one thing from me ever in all of these years, you only take one thing from me, it's that if you let somebody talk, they will tell you everything you need to know. That's probably been out there. I mean, it's got to be a phrase somewhere, right? But if you let someone talk in any situation, they will tell you everything you need to know, right? If I go up to somebody, and here's my spiel. I say, hey, my name's Jersey with XYZ Window Cleaning. We do this place, this place, and this place. And I just wanted to stop in, give you some information on us, and hopefully get you in the schedule. Right now, we're doing the place across the street every week. Um, here's your pricing for everything. And as I'm saying all this, I'm handing them a sheet with the price. They have different frequencies on there. It has our name on there. I have a pamphlet that's all super colorful and nice. Maybe you have some really, really nice, uh, big, uh, single sheet kind of card stock colorful thing that shows them that you're not a bucket bob off the street. And I hand it to them. I said, ah, I was just hoping we could, uh, maybe get you on the schedule. And I hand them all the information. Now, in my entire spiel, I didn't say anything to say yes or no. I didn't ask a no question. I didn't ask a question. I told them my intent. Here's what we're doing. Here's what I'm hoping. Here's my stuff. Because guess what? When I don't ask a yes or no question, the default is not going to be no. I can't say all of that and somebody go, no, because they're instantly an a-hole. In their brain, they're like, well, that, that just conversation flow doesn't go, right? Conversation has a structure. You get to kind of guide a conversation. You don't get to guide them to a yes or no question or answer. You can ask them questions that help them decide that. But if you put all that out there, they're going to look at it, and they're going to tell you everything they need to know. Oh, uh, actually, you know, yeah, so we uh, we have a guy, uh, you know, uh, that's been doing it for years, and uh, yeah, we're pretty happy with him. Oh, great, great. Hey, we love loyalty just as much as the next guy. Um, how's he doing? Pretty good. He shows up regular? Yeah, yeah, he's been doing it for four or five years, and and uh, yeah, he's, he really does good work. Well, cool. Well, we're never looking to steal work from anybody for any reason, but here's our information. If anything changes, or you ever just want to give it a change, I would love to earn your business. I'd love to... Uh, to bring you on board. Oh, great, great, thank you all. Keep your information, right? What happened was they were telling you no, or there's never a no, there's only a not right now, but they were telling you a not right now really kindly, but they told you everything you needed to know. They had another guy. I always ask, oh, cool, who are you using now? I always, if they say they have a guy, I always ask that because guess what? I'm writing my notes down on the back of the sheet so that when I do my follow-up call, I know everything they told me. And they told me he did a great job. 
I always just say, hey, is, you know, is our is our price there on par? Uh, yeah, I'm not even quite sure uh, what we pay that guy. We paid him for so long. Or, oh, you guys are a little bit higher, but yeah. Okay. Or you guys are cheaper. All that information I can write down. So now I know from that one job, which you just thought was a no, right? You thought was a complete waste of your time because you didn't get the bid. Now I know in a week I'm going to call him back. I'm going to call him back and I know. They use John's window cleaning. They, uh, my bid is comparable. And they're very happy with the guy they've had him for years. I know information now. Guess what? When I call back in seven days, which I always, always, always will call the following week, the exact same day, and say, hey, uh, I was in there last Tuesday, and uh, I spoke with, because I wrote their name down, and I just wanted to check in uh, with the bid. Uh, it was a bid for window cleaning. Again, didn't ask a yes or no question. Oh, yeah, let me see. Uh, oh, yeah, I got that. Yeah, I know. You know, we're still happy with the guy we're having now. Oh, yeah, it said you were using John's, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know you guys have been using them for years, so... Uh, like I said then, too, I just wanted to see if you had time to think about anything. If anything does change, let me know, and I'll call you back. We'll follow up with you in a month or so and just kind of keep in with you. And like I said, if there's ever an emergency, you need somebody right away, or something happens with John, let me know. Perfect. Thank you. I've told him I'm going to call him back, right? I told him everything I need to know, and I will follow them, follow up with them again. That follow-up is the number one do for the entire list, is follow-up, is follow-up. I can tell you that in follow-up, almost every one of our yeses comes from follow-up. We get so seldom get a yes. I mean, I'm talking about with full-time salespeople, I'll get maybe five, four or five jobs a week that's an instant yes. That's it. Everything else comes back from follow-up because follow-up is so important. Absolutely important. You have to have the follow-up, right? Follow-up is what gets you the wins. You have to follow up and you have to have a tickler folder every single day that you do sales, right? If you can somehow do sales every day, even if it's an hour, 30 minutes of that is going to be you calling people, following up, 30 minutes will be new people. If you can only do one thing, follow up with the existing people, you already have the contacts. If you're going into a business, it's only to get the contacts so you can call them later. That's your main objective. Yeah, instant yeses are nice, but they're super rare, right? To build a route, you have to follow up. You have to follow up. But don't ask no questions in your follow-up. When you talk to them, do build credibility. Make them understand you're not a bucket bob, right? Don't worry about other window cleaners. Everybody has another window cleaner, everybody, right? Don't send mailers because they don't work and do sell often. Get in there, talk to them as often as possible because that is route. Route 100% is a ton of commitment, but here's the thing. If you get a route job, you can have them for the next 10 years, every single week for 10 years. A route job is so valuable. We don't have frequency in our business, right? Even if you're doing the dentist clothes, which I hope you are, but even if you're doing all of that, frequency is gold for us. I would 100% always, always, always want to have somebody, even if it's one guy who just does 40 hours a week in route, if I could do that, beautiful. Because guess what? I'm going to do that with 10 employees if I could. I would have 10 guys doing routes 40 hours a week. That means that I have 10. If I can fill one month of work or uh, actually uh, every of the two weeks, if I can fill two weeks of work in a rotating schedule of weekly or biweekly, I have a year work for somebody no matter what my weather is. I have almost guaranteed profits coming in for my company. If you've ever hit the middle of winter with nothing happening, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to make this 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 next month. Uh, I hope spring comes. I hope spring comes. It's because you didn't have route. People who hate on route, I get it. But I also don't understand why you wouldn't want to have the frequency and security that's a little bit underlying. It's big. So anyway, do route. If you haven't yet, do route. Route is absolutely phenomenally important. Um, it absolutely is. Uh, if you're still here right now, 
please let me put your orders in. That is a shameless plug of the day. That's what I do. I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. My number is 862-312-2026. That's my cell phone. Save it. Text me. Tell me what's up. Let's do it. I want your orders. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and it helps me. What else helps me is American Window Cleaner Magazine, AWC. Get it. I'm telling you, there's a lot of people who get the magazine just to like support me, support the industry, support everything, which is phenomenal, phenomenal. And by the way, as I've been doing this, I just saw a new uh, subscription come across. I see when you subscribe to the magazine. So do it. I want to see it. And uh, yeah, I do actually, on a side note, I never talk about this much, but I do have a uh, coaching spot available right now. Again, um, so let me know if it's something that you want, uh, private coaching sessions. Uh, that is a weekly weekly call. Um, anyway, message me on that. But do get a subscription to AWC Magazine and do, of course, let me be your rep because you are amazingly awesome like that. And it's a virtual high five. Plus, the new Cool Kid stickers. If you have version one and version two oh, right there, V3 is out. It's not even my face, so that's good, right? But if you want a Cool Kid sticker, just let me know you want a sticker and I'll make sure to send it out to you. So until next week, go out there, sell your heart out and route. But more importantly, go out there and be epic.